Let's, let's pray. Father, <clears throat> we love you and we pray for you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, that you're, you're, you're all knowing anyway. You already do all this. And Father, you've already got it all figured out. You've already got it in a plan. You've got everything ready, Lord. But we need wisdom to be able to connect with that plan and be. we need uh, assistance to be able to connect with that power that you have. Lord, minister to each and every person right now. Lord, Ray Linton, Lord, touch Barbara's family right now in a very powerful way, Lord. And God, it's not too late to raise that granddaughter up. Chelsea could raise right up, Lord. Touch Bethany, heal her body. Ask you right now, Lord, to touch uh, uh, Gary, heal his kidneys. Lord, and touch this family, Lord, that <clears throat> is losing a loved one, God. We ask you right now, Lord, to minister to her this night, Lord, to minister to her family in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for touching all these all these people and their kids and their grandkids and all these, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we love you. We thank you for this service tonight. And Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, <clears throat> we were talking about uh, our purpose in life, and I just wanted to kind of just briefly, and I do mean briefly, just kind of go over a little bit from last week. And I'm not, is there a is there a paper over there from last week yeah. over on that table? Yeah, because I gave I land down there, Eddie, because I just gave Benny some. It's in twenty. Okay. Uh, all right. March thirteenth. <clears throat> for those that for those that were not here, uh, and some of y'all <clears throat> have heard this before. <clears throat> I've talked about it before. And forgive me, because I got something going on. And I'm just rebuking it and keeping on, keeping on. Uh, uh, two very powerful men in history. Both men believe they they were both prominent leaders. They were both change makers. They both changed the history of the world. They were exceptional speakers. They could get things done. They both were heralded as heroes. Both were considered very powerful men of God. One was the Apostle Paul, and the other one was Adolf Hitler. Okay, Adolf Hitler, he actually thought that God was calling him to get rid of the Jews because they had killed his son. So, and Adolf Hitler had studied the priesthood so when he was younger, and <clears throat> he even wrote some very... Some very uh, I consider it kind of wild things like you put uh, uh, my, my Christian feelings point me to my Lord and Savior as a fighter. They point me toward the man who once lonely and surrounded by only a few followers recognized these Jews and called battle against them. And who is the true God was not only the greatest as a sufferer but also the greatest as a warrior. And he actually, and he was, Hitler in 1938 was actually on the front of Time Magazine as Man of the Year. So, I mean, they were considering him good to start with, but he, he turned. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit in this. We're going to talk, we may go back and forth about Hitler and about Paul. I just want to go, 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 uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep you too long and go over this tonight. <clears throat> what is your purpose in life? I, now, I hear people say this all the time. I mean, this, if I could tell you how often I hear this, and even, and what's, what's the saddest part is I don't just hear it from young people. I hear it from older people. I hear it from people that are well up in age, and, and they'll say, I've lived all my life wondering if I have any purpose. So, so uh, uh, here it is. I, I don't feel like my life has purpose. Is there any hope for me? I hear that all the time. And, I, and here's what I tell them, same thing as here. Yes, you can have hope. The God of hope created you, and in the Bible, God says he created you with a special plan for your life. Now, now your life can be filled with hope and purpose, when you choose to follow God's will. Now I want you to pay careful attention to this scripture right here. Jeremiah 29, 11 is a very powerful scripture. But sometimes it's not misquoted. But sometimes it's misunderstood. There's a difference in being misquoted and misunderstood. Alright? Being quoted correctly. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. And in the message it says, I know what I'm doing. Trust me, I've got, I've got this all worked out for you. But what you got to understand is the context of this scripture. It was written when God's people were going into Babylonian captivity. They were getting ready to go into some harsh stuff. And they were going to be in trouble for many, many years. And they were not even going to be able to call their own shots. So I just want you to write, write this down. If you're taking notes, please write this down. Because history has proven this. And it will happen in your own life. And this will probably give you some... some this might give you some ease of suffering tonight. 
There are times when God allows what he hates to accomplish what he loves. There are times when God allows what he hates to accomplish what he loves. The Jews, he loved the Jews, and he wanted them to prosper. But they just kept going the wrong way. They wouldn't stop. They kept doing it their own way. And so I said, okay, then y'all can go into Babylonian captivity. He didn't want, that, was not, that was not his eternal plan for them. That's what, they, they just wouldn't tighten up. And so he said, okay, y'all going into captivity. It's going to hurt. It's going to be hard. But in the end, it's going to bring forth something that I desired. And so there's times in our life God allows some tough things to happen to us in order not just to get our attention, but in order to draw us closer to Him. I've seen a many a person, a many a strong person in the church now, strong right now, would have never been strong if they hadn't gone through something along the way. My own self. What drew me to God the very first time after I backslid, what drew me back was life decisions. And I got pulled in. I said, God, i got to have an answer. And the Lord drew me back in and gave me that answer. And so, again, you know, I'll say it one more time. It's, it's the theology of suffering. There are times when God allows what he hates to accomplish what he loves. So there's times we go through some tough stuff. But we go through tough stuff because it builds us. It either shapes us with character. It's not always trying to get us in the right direction. Sometimes he allows it <coughs> so that we can help others. Do you know that you know the best person to help somebody is a wounded a wounded soldier? A, somebody that's been there? Yeah. I mean, you can't come tell me how what it's like to lose a loved one if you've never <coughs> lost one unless you can read it from a book. Yeah. If, if you've never, like, just like... Uh, this isn't minor at all, and I'm not downplaying this as a minor thing. It's a major thing, but Benny lost that finger. Okay? I mean, he could have lost his hope. Oh, I, I know. handed a minute ago. I know. <laughs> I know. Barbara helps him keep up with it. And uh, she's gone. So she's I'm gone, sure. yeah. What I was going to say is, so, uh, that's major, not minor, but there are people who lost their arms, their whole hand, their whatever. But you know what? Benny can go to a person that's suffering loss of a limb and say, I understand the feeling of ghost pains. I understand the feeling of your nerves thinking it's still there, waking up trying to scratch it. You know, uh, <clears throat> there was a preacher friend of mine that had lost his leg. And he, several times, he lost it almost up to the hip. And on several occasions, he got up in the middle of the night after he lost his leg for years. Mm -hmm. He'd be dreaming in the middle of the night and thinking something was coming or he had to get up and take care of business. And he'd jump out of bed and stand up and hit the ground. Because mm -hmm. in his dream, he had both legs. Now, I can't explain that. I can't even talk to him about that. Other than I can say, you know, this is, you know, I understand what I've read about ghost pains, and I understand what I read about the aura that's still around that leg, but I, I've never had that kind of experience. So sometimes God allows what He hates in our own life, and hates for us in order He can use us in a greater way. And Joseph, He could have never used Joseph as Prime Minister of Egypt with Joseph the way He was. Joseph had to go through this because Joseph, Joseph was stuck on Joseph. And so after Joseph went through all this, Joseph was no longer stuck on Joseph. Joseph learned through, through his suffering, and when after he learned, then he was ready. And the man, he, do some, he, he, he changed history. So, here we go. What is your significance? I'm glad you asked. Y'all ready? <laughs> yeah. Your significance has to do with your importance. Everybody in here is important. There is some Christian circles around that teach you that nobody's important. And that, you know, I mean, you go to church and you feel like a worm when you leave. You ever go to church and feel like you've been beat down? And, and, and I'm not talking about because you're convicted, because God's really convicting you of something. I'm talking about you go into service, just go into service and everybody's beating you down. We, you know, we're, 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 low, we're low lives, you know, we're nothing but worms and blah, blah, blah. So I wonder if God even let us live, but we'll get to church this morning. Ugh! You know, that is not how God does it. We are significant to Him. We are important to Him. Every last one of us has a purpose in our life for His glory. So, so everybody's important. Look at somebody and say you're important. You're tell important. them. Tell them. That's right. Now tell them. Look at them and say, well, you are too. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Look at them. So, so, so watch this. You're important, but this is your significance. Let's break down your significance. Your significance refers to your personal value 
and your individual worth. We talked about this uh, a couple of months ago again, uh, but we won't go into that now. But personal value and individual worth. And the problem with, problem with people many times, especially if they've just gone through something, is if they've gone through a Babylonian captivity in their own lives, they think they don't have any personal value. They don't have any individual worth. But you've got to understand, if God allowed it, it was not to destroy you. It was to build you up. How many's that, and I've never done this, but how many has ever been through boot camp in here? Okay, boot camp, boot camp. You were, you were also, you were uh, law enforcement. Law enforcement, yeah, Lord, yes. I remember, I remember Daniel talking to me about that. Yeah, wow. yeah, law enforcement, <laughs> a military, uh, military, Navy. Navy. Oh, yeah, so y'all know what it's like. How about being married, David? That's boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a boot, all right, but it's not camping. Well, and some people hey. get delivered and get married again. <laughs> that was funny. That's like Sunday night. Somebody told me, y'all remember Sunday morning? I said, "You're married. You're not supposed to be happy." Somebody came to me after service. I mean, service. So I mean, uh, thanks to the night, I said, that was hilarious, but I couldn't laugh because the wife was looking at me. <laughs> 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 they come a long way. Uh, that's right. So because here. they lived in a little bitty, oh, what was a little, little bitty brown shirt? A little, a little brown brown shack. Oh, <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and they were a happy family. And look what we're probably happier then than we are and now. And still happy. <laughs> 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 Okay, well here we go. When you, when, when you go through something, especially when you're, and if you're sick, if you're not careful when you're sick, or say maybe you just lost your job, or you're going through some kind of tragedy, your personal value, you, you actually, Satan, and it's Satan, it's not God. Satan will devalue you. He devalues us. He tells us that we're not, there's not much to us, or God would have taken care of us. If there was anything to us, this would not have happened. Blah, blah, blah. He just keeps on, keeps on telling us. But God never devalues us. If he allows us to go through something that's not to devalue us, it's to increase our value. Because remember, to him, we're being purged like gold. It's always to go up. Satan, when he brings stuff on us to tear you down, but God's always to build you up. So Satan does the devalue, and God does the, the increase of value. So, your significance is one of three God. These are God-given inner needs. These everybody's got. You can say you don't have it. Uh, maybe not like somebody else may have it, but you've got it. This is for every person in this room. Everybody has to have these three things. Number one, everybody needs love. That's right, the Beatles sang that in, yeah. Da, 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 da. All you need is love. Well, you know, I was listening this morning, and, and to even get by during the day, everybody needs at least four to eight hugs. Mm -hmm. And if you and then if you want to get really <laughs> And Beth is down the plane by there. Twelve hugs. I never I never let me finish. Dear. <laughs> See, when my wife's not here, she'll take her place. No. <laughs> Somebody asked, who preaches to the preacher? I said, we got a wife. Amen. Right. Y'all say, y'all say Brother David and Pastor David and Brother and, and Pastor. And she goes, David, get here right now. Uh -huh. Did you hear what I said, boy? That's right. That's right. So, yeah. Uh, she said, Dad. <laughs> but in order, in order to, to get beyond, to feel that love, to actually feel feel that love, a person needs to start going beyond about 12 hugs a day. Wow. 12 hugs. It doesn't have to be from the same person, but 12 hugs a day is that significance. And but a donut it, but, with each one. And a donut with each one? <laughs> well, that's pretty cool, too. All right. That's too much. That could get a Benny and I, now we don't do it anymore, but Benny and I, we first started going to the prison. It was just me and him by ourselves. That's right. And so we would go in there, and I had a certificate for a free dozen donuts, so we'd buy one mixed dozen, and we got a free regular dozen, and we would eat just about, and sometimes the whole 12 donuts a piece. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yep. And one day they come in and said they didn't have any business. And if y'all 
We'll put on these hats and drum us up some business. We'll give you some damn nuts. And Ben and I said, where you want them? <laughs> we walked outside with those hats on. We come back in. The place was packing out. Yeah, right. yeah. But, yeah but people, people said, where y'all from? We said, we just, we just got out of prison. <laughs> well, that was true. We did. <laughs> <laughs> just walked out the Yeah, yeah. So, but, but, but now, two is about the best I can do. Three on a good night. But back then, it was 12 apiece. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Couldn't do that now. But look, personal value and individual worth. Now, here it is first. Oh, love, love. Receiving an unchanging, unconditional commitment from another regarding what is best for you. That's more than just some kind of mushy, filly kind of stuff. I mean, we all like mushy, feely good stuff, but I want love. I want somebody that's going to be there. I can depend on them. That's not based on mushy, feel good. It's based on I love you, and I'm here for you, and I'm going to help take care of you. You know. Through sickness and in health. What, dear? I said through sickness and in health. That's exactly right. My dog, my dog Does that include the less than perfect driving record? Yes. <laughs> You, I said my dogs feel that way about me. Yeah, everybody, you know, dog, dog spelled backwards is God. That's right. Oh, they are. They are just. That's right. There again. That's right. Did you hear about? Did you hear about the dyslexic atheist? He didn't believe there was a dog. <laughs> oh, I heard. That. <laughs> I heard on the radio <laughs> they're pushing now to get chaplains on, in the military to get chaplains for atheists. Really? That's what they say. Yeah, was the chaplain talking about it? Well, this well this year at Easter we've got two holidays on the same day. We got them for Christians and for atheists on the same day. Because on Easter Sunday is Easter Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And Easter Sunday is also April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the Bible says that the fool has said in his heart there is no God. So April Fool's Day is the atheist. May fool. That's right. Um, a lot of people disagree, but atheism is a religion. Oh, it's very yeah. much a religion. Yeah. Uh, and there is actually, uh, just a few years ago, the National... Atheist Church has been, there has actually been a church established for atheism. Yeah, the atheist is considered a religion. And even at PCDC, it's a religion. <laughs> what do they really They believe in themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you heard the Human. so they Human agnostic church? prayer, didn't you? What do they worship? I mean, I don't know. They worship, their, they worship, they worship knowledge and wisdom and their self. Yeah. There's not a God. There's not a divine being. There's not a divine being. They may have a church. There's some places they may have a church, but it's more yeah. like a. It'd be more like a community building. Uh -huh. uh, they're not worshiping. They're yeah. just. They're just. They're saying there is no God. We we take care of ourselves. It's the scientists yeah. who do it all. Yeah, that's no. right. You know, I wonder. Yeah. No, no, no. Did you hear the agnostics' prayer? What's that? Dear God, if there is one, save my soul if I have one. <laughs> well, you heard that, yeah, because because the, the, the agnostic thinks that God just spun up everything together and backed away. No, that's that's a deist. I know it's a deist. See, there you go. We, me, me and Eddie had a big discussion, but remember, I brought a brought around. You told me you believe after I told you about it. I said it. Is there, there is there is a deist, but there's also the agnostic. Well, anyway, about it. Did you hear about the agnostic deist that was a dyslexic? No. He believe, he doesn't he believes there's a he's not sure there's a dog but he knows he can't get in touch with him. <laughs> is, there a wicker, is there a wicker church in you? Yeah, yes, yeah. there was a wicked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there is. Yeah, it is in it's they moved to Pamlico County. It was in Green. Yeah, I, yeah, I was um yeah. International yes. School of Wicked yes. is that particular one and they're not recognized by the rest of the Wiccans because yes. that's just a bunch of weirdos. That's the devil is. What's the rest of them? I wonder if they, uh, they recognize me. The demons yeah. get into their uh, congregation. The Wiccans? Demons. Demons where? In what congregation? Into the. What y'all were talking Atheist. about? The atheists. Oh yeah, but you know why? Yeah. You know why? Because people they don't if they don't if they don't believe in it, it can be in there and they don't even realize it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so love. Unconditional love. That means I love you no 
matter what. Agape love? It's agape love, yes. Yeah. And that's the kind of love God, that men, are, or men and wives should have toward each other, but especially the men for their wives. Because <clears throat> it said, just as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it, we must also love our wives and give our lives for them. So, love. That's right. Number two, significance. Knowing that your life has meaning and purpose. Psalm 57 says, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. Psalm 57 and 2. So, everybody in here, you just, y'all, y'all, everybody right now just say, God made me with a purpose. God made me with a purpose. And here's the problem. We mistake, <laughs> we mistake a purpose with a destination. Okay? That's the problem. Because a destination is, well, I'm going to be a preacher. Once I'm a preacher, I've, I've accomplished my purpose. No. No. That means I moved to a calling. A destination. But that's like saying, well, once I get to Chocolinity, I'm home. No. I'm just, I'm just a Chocolinity. Okay? I'm in the vicinity. Destination is, 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 is the, the target area, but a purpose is, a purpose is fulfilled every day of your life. <laughs> And the problem is we get so busy looking at the destination that we forget that every bit along the way there's something for us to do. Every day, every moment, there's something for us to do. And if we don't get caught up in being over there in that thing, that's it. That's where I gotta be, that's what I gotta be doing, that thing right there, then we then we'll mess out with our family, we'll mess out with our wives, our husbands, we'll mess out on our jobs. There's little things that we do every day that can really make a big difference. So remember. Don't get caught up in the destination. Significance is a journey. <clears throat> and number three, security. Being granted with an unshakable sense of belonging and acceptance. He who fears the Lord has a secure fortress. I need to know that, that God wants me, and I need to know that, that, that it's not going to shake every time I turn around, that God's changed his mind, that uh, he loves me today and doesn't love me tomorrow. You know, <clears throat> that I've done something so bad that he can't forgive me? You know, <clears throat> no. No. You know, <clears throat> I, I've had, I've had <clears throat> countless guys in prison ask me this, and I've had guys <clears throat> in the military who have, been, who have seen combat ask me the same thing, and that is, they tell me, I've done things that I don't think God will forgive me for. I've heard it many times. And the, 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 the problem with that is that's just the enemy talking to you and that's your flesh talking to you because there's nothing you can do. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. That's what Romans 8 says. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And and just like I, think, I know I told y'all, I was at the party, this party or cookout, and there was like oh, how many people, 50 people there? And, and I happened to go sit down on the porch, and it was like everybody moved. Everybody just moved. I couldn't believe it. It was like the Red Sea parted. It was just me sitting there and a guy. The guy sits there and starts crying. I mean, I'm talking to him. He just starts crying. And I said, are you all right? I'm out of clear blue sky. I know God did this. He orchestrated this. And he said he was a Marine sniper. And he hadn't been in the military for years. And... and and, and the only reason I knew it was a Marine sniper is because somebody else had told me earlier, uh, a couple months before. That's the only reason I knew. And he says, he just starts crying. And I said, can I ask you what's up? And he says, yeah. He says, I, think, I, I believe, I, he said, I've done things I don't believe God will ever forgive me for. And I said, what are you talking about? And then he started talking about being a Marine Corps sniper. He didn't tell me any of this stuff. He just said I was a Marine Corps sniper. I was overseas, and he said I was called to do some things that were horrendous. And he said, he, and, and he did say something like, it was almost like cold-blooded murder, you know. And, and I told him, I said, okay, can we stop for a second? He said, yes. So why do you feel like God won't forgive you? He said, because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. And I said, hold on. I said, the man that was having it written, the man that wrote it, and then I'm getting it for the finger of God on the Ten Commandments, he was going places they were killing people left and right. 
Ten Commandments, I shall not kill. Everywhere Moses went, there was, a, there was graves in the promised land. He said, why? Well, I didn't think about that. I said, yeah, I said, there's three exceptions for killing in the Old Testament. And you got to remember this. Number one, in defense of your home. Number two, defense of your country. And number three, capital punishment. He said, oh, yeah. I said, look at Achan. Achan, Achan died. They, they killed him. They all got together and killed him. Look, I said, you got to remember, there's three exceptions for and God says, thou shalt not murder. Do not say thou shalt not kill an act of war or defense or in that. He says, wow. And I said, also, Jesus said, Render unto Caesar's what Caesar's, unto God what's God's. He said, yeah. I said, well, uh, did you volunteer for the services? He said, yes, I did. I said, you signed a paper, and you put your hand up, and you took a note that you would do what Uncle Sam told you to do. He said, yes, sir, at the expense of my own life. I said, okay. Danny meant that you were supposed to do what he they told you to do. And he, I said, did you volunteer to be a sniper? He said, no, I was in boot camp. And he said, somebody kept watching me. And finally they come up to me and said, you're moving out. So where am I moving to? He said, you're going to be a sniper. He said, they trained me as a Marine Corps sniper. He said, life was never the same after that. Mm -hmm. And I said, so what you did was you did what, they, they're the ones that called you out, and they're the ones that put you in this position. He said, yep. I said, so you were rendering unto Caesar what was Caesar's in an act of war. He said, yeah, I didn't think about it that way. I said, okay then. You think God can forgive you for following what he already said is okay? And he said, I never thought about that. And then he just went, I'm not kidding. He went, <sighs> and he says, the first time I felt peace over this in 10 years. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Yeah. And so, so again, you know, security. He did not have any security. He was serving God, but he didn't have that security. And he walked around with fear. He said, if I die, I'm going to go to hell. I'm serving God, but if I die, I'm going to go to hell because the things I did as a Marine Corps sniper. I said, you're not going to go to hell for that. You did what you you rendered to Caesar or Caesar. It was an act of war. You were defending your country. You were defending your homeland. Don't don't even think twice about it. So now when I see him, he's smiling. Well, uh, convicted killer, murderer uh, that killed a lot and killed a lot of people like that boy in, in Florida. If they accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, they're forgiven. Yep. And it's erased. That's right. It's erased. Exactly. And there's people that's like that, 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 that have accepted Jesus and they have a clean slate. All right, so here it is, security. It's not going to have many rewards up there. <laughs> yeah, things are going to be a little different, but when, yeah. when, when right now here. They're going to have to pay, but they're not making it. Okay. Okay. And what is, is, you, what is, 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 is we're build, you're building, this is kind of a weird thing, because the Bible says, about the people workers in the field. The workers in the field, the ones that came at the last hour made the same that the workers came at the first hour. And it says it's not fair. They were, we worked all day and they come in at the end. Now they've got this. And what it's talking about is, is it doesn't matter how long you serve God. Once you ask Jesus into your heart and life, you're going to heaven. Right. But the reward system is going to be a little different. <laughs> Because of the rewards that you have done. I mean, the stuff you've done for God. That, But then that's even going to be different. Because this guy here may have had what you consider 10 great rewards. All you do, 10 great accomplishments. And all you've got is one accomplishment. But you got to understand. He may have had 10 great, or say 5 great accomplishments. You had one. But he may have been anointed to have 10 great accomplishments. And so he actually underdid it. And you were on top, you were anointed to have one, and you did that one. So you did 100%, he did 50%. Mm -hmm. You know something that stands mm -hmm. out in yeah. my mind? What's that? It's when Jesus was on the cross, the <clears throat> two prisoners that were side of him. Yep. One of them went to heaven right then. Yeah, right then. Mm -hmm. That's right. They took him right with him. What are you saying? I, I lost it. Okay. <laughs> my forgottery kicked in. Again. <laughs> over there, you <laughs> idiot. My my forgottery's got a good lock on it too. Yeah. All right. So now here we go. These following statements. Stuff I hear all the time. Stuff you hear all the time. Stuff I've said. Stuff you'll say. But they express some desires of your heart. If you've ever if you've ever said this, I want you when I read it. I want you to raise your hand. And I want everybody to look around. And just look around. If you ever, don't be afraid to raise your hand. I promise you. Okay. Raise your hand. I'm everybody sit around the crank. Sometimes you think you're by yourself, or you're, or or you or, or maybe you're thinking, well, maybe I haven't done enough or something. So let's see this. Look, I want my life to count. 
Look around. Everybody. I want my life to make a difference. I want my life to be significant. I, I want my life to have meaning. I want my life to have purpose. Why? Wow, isn't this something? I want my life to have impact. I want my life to stand for something important. I want my life to have value. Wow. Isn't that something? <clears throat> we all feel the same way. We might not think we do, but we do. We've all got the same desires in our heart.